Hello everyone. Happy Friday. Thanks so much for coming in tonight, guys. We are working on block 68 of the Splendid Sampler. Uh, we're going to do some uh, embroidery today. Uh, thanks replay viewers for coming in and thanks YouTube viewers. Uh, YouTube viewers, if you'd like to join in the Periscope chat, download Periscope to your device and search for Penguin and Fish. I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central. So, all right, guys, here we are. I'm going to flip you around and we'll get started tonight. Hello, hello, everyone. Hold on, let me fix my cords. There we go. So we are working on block uh, 68 of the Splendid Sampler. It is so cute. I am just loving it. It's by Pat Sloan. Uh, I think it's called Wild Rose. Let me check. I don't know if that's right. It is called, yep, Wild Wild Roses. <laughs> so there we are. We, we did all the applique last night, and tonight we are just going to stitch it down. And I'm going to stitch it down with uh, by hand with a blanket stitch. I was going to use embroidery, but then I saw my mom posted on the, on the Facebook page, the Splendid Sampler Facebook page, and she used... Uh, an Aurifil, just Aurifil 50 weight, so, and it looked super cute. I haven't used something this thin to applique before, so I thought we'd give that a try. Uh, and I have this perfect little blue that will go with, with uh, my little flower here. So I'm excited to get going on that. We'll see how far we can get. Uh, I don't think we'll get the whole thing done. The hand stitching takes a little while. Uh, if you're new here, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. I'm the author of Sew and Stitch Embroidery and a fabric designer, and I'm so happy that you're here with me tonight. I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central. So, all right, guys, I hope you're having a great Friday. Let me know what's going on. I'm going to flip you around, and we'll get going. Okay. Oh, did it get weird? It got super dark just then, didn't it? All right, I think we're... I think we're okay right now. Okay, so I have some Aurifil, which is the brand name of the thread, and it's 50 weight, which is a rather skinny, uh, thin thread. This is what we're using to sew our, our all of our blocks together, this 50 weight. So to me, in my, in my head, it doesn't really scream use for applique, but uh, my mom had gotten uh, Pat Sloan's cute box of Aurifil floss applique and, uh, or, uh, thread, and it looks so cute, so I'm gonna try it too. You know, normally I would use a thicker thread at least, but I'm gonna just do double up, um, double up on this Aurifil. I'm gonna get about that much. This might be a little much. We're gonna test it. Um, it just looks so cute, my mom's block. So, all right, I'm going to just tie this in a, a knot here. When I do embroidery, usually I do this a little differently, but I'm just going to just tie a really big knot. Uh, we have a, it's going to go through a lot of fabric, so I don't think it's going to fall out of there. So I'm also, I, I rarely do this and I don't really know much about it, but I'm going to wax my thread. Um, I think the wax, if I... If I'm correct, if you guys use wax, let me know um, some of the benefits. But I think it just makes your thread a little stronger. And I'm going to try it just, uh, I think it'll help keep it from twisting up on each other. So I'm going to see if that helps. So I'm just going to, it has a piece of wax in here and these little slots. And I'm going to just run my thread through the wax like this. It smooths the fibers. Okay. So that's a good thing. This is probably a little longer piece of thread uh, than I should have used. I'm hoping it doesn't get unmanageable as I stitch, especially with um, doing two strands together. It might get a little funny, but uh, we're gonna give it a go. Use wax when you hand sew. Oh, keeps the tangles in line. That's that's my plan. That's what I'm hoping um, this will do for me. Oh, you know what? I was going to use. Uh, oh, you made four of this 
lock is so cute. I'm gonna get the thimble out too, I think. Let's let's try and find it. Okay, right, here we go. I'm going to uh, try and use this. I think I was, yeah, I must have been doing it on my third finger. Uh, this will help push, push it through the fabric because we got a whole pile of fabric here. I'm gonna just get you guys in focus. So I'm gonna do a blanket stitch. I'm gonna start with the center circle. So this, we're going through tons of fabric. Um, we're going through um, sometimes one, two, three, four pieces of fabric at once. And all this, oh, and five, and all this fabric has stabilizer on it too, which makes it even more thick. And you know what? I think that might be a reason that this thin orofill will work really well. So I'm just going to go like a stitch over. Wow, yeah, it's a little difficult to press in. Um, normally I would come up right away, but it's a little stiff to do that. We'll give it a try with the next stitch. So all right, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, did basically a stitch up and a stitch over. That's where I, I, um, you know, if I'm just aiming. So I kind of did a diagonal is where I put it in. And now I'm coming back up on the other side. And I'll, sh I'll do this again, because that was kind of confusing. I just kind of, the way I'm explaining it. Um, but I'm coming back inside the loop. Getting stuck on my watch, getting stuck on the fabric, just getting stuck everywhere. All right. So then just pulling it uh, so the loop's right there, but I'm pulling up on the thread, so it's right on the edge there, and that's basically my bur my first uh, blanket stitch. All right, I lost my needle. I can't pick it up with my thimble on. <laughs> oh, I'm feeling clumsy today. So down, and now I can go up right away. That's ideal but there's so much fabric that it's a little difficult to aim, but there we go. So down over there and then up straight, uh, perpendicular to the edge of the fabric. And we're coming inside that loop and we're gonna catch that loop with the thread. This is gonna be really delicate. I think, I, I think I'm gonna like just this 50 weight, but wow, yeah, it'll be nice to not be on the inside here anymore. It's really rather thick. All right, but I think I'm getting the hang of it now. So tomorrow is the day, guys. We are going to attempt to paint our ceiling and our living room. <laughs> right now, I, I kind of don't have a picture on how that's going to even be possible. I mean, we, we have to move all the furniture out to somewhere. Uh, the hallway, I don't know that we don't really have a hallway to do that. Uh, nor will anything like fit in the hallway, I think. Ugh, I don't know. So we might just have to leave it in the living room and cover it up with, um, with uh, like plastic, but like that doesn't seem a, like a safe way to not get something wet or paint get paint on it and we oh I broke the thread already here guys bummer uh, I won't we don't have our we don't have the room measured or anything yet so we don't know how much to paint to buy and I don't think we're even sure we're gonna buy the paint yet plus you know we actually have to paint so I don't know, I'm a little wary on how we're going to get that all done in one day. <laughs> uh, but it will get started and it's only the first day of the weekend. So um, there's Sunday too, I guess, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping to be done tomorrow. I don't know. You know what? I am not sure I've ever actually painted a room now that I think about it. Maybe that's why I'm nervous. John seems to think it'll be 
easy enough, but I don't know. I just start thinking through all the steps and everything and it just uh, wondering, huh, how's that gonna all work out? Wow, I'm clumsy with this thimble. Definitely, definitely getting comfortable with that yet. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm fun, I don't know. <laughs> You know what? I'm gonna try this on my fourth finger. Ah, it doesn't fit on the fourth finger. We're gonna do it on the third still. Dang it. Do you guys have a long weekend this weekend? Um, should we be having a long weekend? Is there something going on? I mean, I, I'm horrible with holidays. Um, I don't know. We both work from home, so technically I suppose we could have a long weekend, but just because we work from home doesn't mean that there's tons of work to, uh, not tons of work to do. So we'd like to, I would like to contain it to just Saturday so I can work on, oh, it's Thanksgiving in the, in Canada. Oh yeah. So we, we don't have off for that. Um, well, that's exciting. So happy Thanksgiving to all the Canadians. Um, is it Columbus Day? Oh, is that a bank holiday? President's Day? Uh, is it Columbus Day? I, you know, honestly, I, I don't, I rarely ever know when any of that stuff is going on. Like Labor Day and all those things. Columbus Day. Do you, is Columbus Day a bank holiday? I wonder. Oh, that's October 12th. All right, see, all y'all don't know either. <laughs> Wow, I'm having trouble with this tonight. I think it's just one of those nights though. I wanna, I wanna use my third finger for the thimble, but I need, I'm gonna just come, come all the way through, but I need that third finger for, to hold stuff. My fourth finger doesn't do that well. All right, I gotta take that off for a sec. Oh, it's rolling away on me. But I need it because this is really thick. <laughs> We're about halfway done there, but I think it's looking kind of cute. I'm doing pretty big stitches. I started a little bit smaller and then I got bigger and bigger as I went around um, just because I'm just, I guess, not paying too close attention to what I started out with. So maybe now I'll have to get smaller and smaller. So when I meet up with this again, I'll be, I'll be close to the same size. A little more. There we go. Crafty day. Every day is crafty day, or it should be, right? So I also noticed I started my blanket stitch, stitch a little different than I usually do. Um, Oh, I didn't pick up I I didn't pick up the machine yet, no. Um the day kind of got away from me today. But I'm the paint shop where we have to get all our paint is right next to the sewing machine shop. So I'm gonna just get it tomorrow when we get paint. But yep, I'm gonna ask about that foot pedal thing and see what they gotta say. 
almost all the way around. Oops. For some reason I feel like it might take the whole day just to get the paint. <laughs> I hope that's not the case because uh, I want it done. Done, done. We're kind of doing a lot of house projects all at once, at least for us. I mean, we don't do any house projects like ever. So um, it's, it's weird that we're gonna be painting and we're doing the basements, basement walls and stuff. All right, I'm gonna just tack that down. All right, we got around the first bit here. Worst person on that finger thing, the thimble. Yeah, I am uh, kind of having some trouble <laughs> with it too. I'm just, I just feel like I'm a little all over the place. I'm gonna jump right out and start um, this next little area here. So now the actual way I think to do, to start a back stitch, or not a back stitch, a blanket stitch is uh, to do one of these downward stitches first and then come up in the same place that you came out of here. Let me get in focus a little bit. All right, I don't, I don't think we'll be able to get any better focus than that. Uh, so you're kind of making one of those stitches right away uh, and then I'm going to go from right to left and now it's kind of locked in place and now I can continue normally, but I'll have that one stitch there already. Um, I think if I was in the hoop, it would be a little more difficult because, um, oh, thanks for coming in, Suzanne. Um, I think uh, it'd be a little more difficult in a hoop because I can't um, manipulate the fabric like this. Like It'd be hard for me to go in and out at the same time. If I was in a hoop, I would have to keep the hoop pretty loose. So I think in this case, it's it's easier this way. I think it's it doesn't have to do with the fabric or thread or anything. It has to do with me feeling like I'm losing coordination by not having my, my uh, third finger. Like, I feel like I use this a lot. Like, you know, I'm holding, when I hold a needle, I hold it like this, and this is my, um, my third finger is like what pushes pressure on a needle and you know like this is just kind of a pivot point and this is kind of what controls it a little bit so to have it completely blocked off with this thimble um is kind of messing me up <laughs> so i'm i'm just trying to adapt to that and this is actually really i'm going through a lot of of fabric here because remember it's like sometimes five layers of fabric plus a stabilizer, which, you know, is like a bunch more fabric. So I think we're going to do one more stitch and I'm going to have to end this thread. Down and up. There we go. It's how to go through all the fabric. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Nope, I did not pick up the machine yet. I am going to pick it up tomorrow though. All right, let's lose the thimble and I'm going to tie this off in the back. I'm just going to do one more stitch to hold that in place, just right on the other side of that loop. There we go. All right, well, we got a good start going here. I feel like we're just not focusing well tonight. Let me get in there again. All right, so we did blanket stitches around this little center and a start on that middle piece. So now I'm just going to kind of weave in the backs of my stitches a little bit. Oh, my machine, I brought it, well, first of all, I, uh, it, the main reason was that the cord, uh, right where it plugs into the wall, I don't think was connecting properly anymore. Like if there was too much weight on the cord, it would, it would turn off. Um, but if you turn it the other way, then the weight would be going the right way and it would stay on. So that's not right. There shouldn't be something, the cord shouldn't be doing that. Uh, so that was the main reason that I took it in. And then I just decided to get it cleaned at the same time. And you know, that might be why 
took kind of a while. Um, maybe not. I don't know. They said they had like 20 machines in front of me or something just like that. So, ah, well. Well, that's where it was. So when I pick up the paint for the living room tomorrow, I'll, we'll stop by there too. It's right next door. But you know what? I kind of want to keep sewing on this old Singer for a little while, I think. Although I do have to check the tension because um, the tension was kind of kind of weird. Oops. We know... Oh, I don't want to go as long this time. We know what colors we want to do in theory, but we haven't quite um, picked the actual, you know, paint color, like the words of, and the number of the actual paint color. We know broadly what colors we want, but we haven't picked the final. We have swatches, but it, at this point it kind of depends on if we go to this local paint shop by us, uh, the Sherman Williams by us, locally owned. Um, or if we go to like a Home Depot and, or Menards or something and just get what they have there. We have swatches from both places, so I think we just have to check prices and stuff. We'd like to go to the local place, like the locally owned place, but when we went in there, it was, I don't know, the customer service wasn't great and, I don't know, we were a little weirded out when we went there, although I think they had the colors we liked the best. Um, so I don't know. It didn't, you know, with local shops, the thing that sets apart, can set apart a local shop compared to like a big box store that has all the things for cheaper and, and all that, uh, the thing that sets them apart should be the service. And this was just, it just seemed like it had some barely knowledgeable, like junior high kids working it or something, you know what I mean? Who were there on their Saturday and, uh, you know, had to be there and I don't know. It was a little weird when we went in there. But we'll probably end up going that route anyway just because I do like that it's a local place and um, we did actually like their colors the best. Uh, but, you know, paints, like we were looking at the price of some of that, like a gallon of paint is expensive. We gotta, we have to measure our living room yet to um, figure out how many square feet we need um, to, in theory, figure out how many gallons we need to get. Uh, so, like that, we haven't done any of that math or any of that figuring out yet. <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna paint paint the um, paint the living room tomorrow. So I don't know. All that's gonna get figured out somehow real quick. <laughs> we'll have to wake up early or something. But we're going to paint it uh, mostly white. Paint used to be cheap. Yeah, it used to be affordable to decorate. I know, exactly, right? Um, and we haven't painted in our house at all yet. We just have the, like, what the renovators painted it, which is kind of like this mauve color. I got a little loose thread there. I'm going to snip that. Um, and we actually shoot a lot of video stuff and, and uh, uh, camera stuff in our living room, or enough that that mauve wall is becoming annoying. So we're just going to paint it a, a simple white. Um, I might take two coats. I'm hoping that we can get that primer and whatever all in one so we can just do one coat. But I guess I don't know how well any of that stuff works. But yeah, so uh, the, mostly it's going to be white because that's going to work best for the photography stuff we want to do in the living room. It's all based on work and art related stuff, everything we do in our house. Uh, so um, mostly white. Three walls and the ceiling are going to be white. We have to paint the ceiling. The whole thing that started this ordeal was that we had a leak in the ceiling in the roof actually, and that's all fixed now. Um, it was just something stupid and now it's fixed, but it made a stain on our ceiling. So now we have to paint over 
that and we thought we'd paint the rest too while we we're at it. Um, so first we got to paint the ceiling. That's going to be white and three of the walls are going to be white. And then the other wall is going to be black, which is kind of goofy, but I like the idea of it. We're painting it black because that's where the TV is and we're going to mount the TV on the wall. And then I'm hoping that it'll make the TV just kind of disappear into the wall, like blend into the background because the TV is black. <laughs> So then it won't be like, you know, a whole room that has that, you know, a TV in it, you know? It'll just be our nice living room with our chair that I can read in and, uh, you know, our we're going to put a bookshelf up on the wall that's much smaller than our, much uh, less deep, so shallower than our old uh, bookshelf that was there and will hold tons more books. So, um, and we're going to go through our stuff that's on the wall so it's not so busy and it's just going to be a more curated, I suppose, more thoughtful. That's a better word. It's going to be a more thoughtful living room and it's going to just feel better. It'll be, it'll be a nice escape from all the work that we're doing. Tip, I find that extra money for paint with a base coat not worth it. Oh, you always need two coats. Okay. Regular paint is all you need. Okay. That's what I need to hear. <laughs> Thanks. I, I, I appreciate that because that's kind of where John was leaning to, but I'm like, why do we need to do that? So, okay. Ah, that's good to know, but boo! That means a lot of painting. But I suppose we could do all the white first. Like, you, we can do the ceiling, and then while that's drying, you do the walls, and then go back to the ceiling and do the walls again. And then I'm thinking we do the black last. And there's all, we have a bunch of trim too, but uh, in theory, all that's white. Ugh, we're going to have to decide if we're going to paint that tomorrow, but we probably should because it's all scuffed up and, but that's a big project, all the trim. And then we're going to do a, a light gray for just the entryway. So you're going to enter to like this kind of light gray and you're going to see white, uh, the white walls of everything else. But then when you get through the entry and turn around, that's where the black wall is going to be. So that's the plan. That's the vision. <laughs> and the one wall, when you walk in on the left, that's where we're going to do the bookshelf. Oh yeah, you're right. I like enamel trim. Thick though as a paint. Huh. That's kind of interesting. But yeah, I think the black and white might be a bit harsh, but uh, again, it's functional for us. Like the white backgrounds are great for when we do like little beauty shots of stuff. And John does uh, some film things and every once in a while, you know, he'll like interview a friend for a project in our living room and stuff too. But it's always that weird colored wall that was never nice. So white does well for that. So that's why the white... Um, but we also have a, like a lot of wood stuff, like warm wood, like our, uh, we have a, you know, an old wood floor that's really warm and we have a brown couch. So that's a little odd with the white and, and black, I think, but it's, it's just warm and there's some other wood pieces, just like wood, like little wood table and, and stuff like that. So I think all that will warm it up. And then, you know, we always have kind of brighter colored pillows and blankets and quilts and, you know, all sorts of other craftiness that will kind of warm it up, I think. At least that's, that's the plan. We'll see how it goes. And then I think um, some fun art uh, that will pop on the white and, and on the black. I got a little... Hollywood style, white walls, black enamel trim. Uh, I don't know if we're going to do do that. that. That might be a little much for me. I kind of want the black wall to be like this subtle thing uh, where you're like, oh, wow, that's a black wall. Um, that I, you know, I don't want like so much 
focus on it, like, with the... I don't want it to feel like a white, like, we did a white and black theme. Um, you know what I mean? Like, with, you know, the white walls and black trim and, you know, white with black details everywhere and black with white details. I don't really want that look. Like, you know, they had examples of stuff like that when we were at the store, and I don't want it to feel so graphic like that. I want it to feel a little bit more subtle and warm, um, which I know is a challenge with the colors that we're choosing. But I think with all our stuff there, it's going to warm it all up, and it won't be so much the focus of the room. I don't know. We'll see. And if it's crazy and dramatic, we'll just live with it. <laughs> For sure, so I'll have to, uh, I'll take pics while we work. I'll have to remember. Um, but then I'll show you guys on Periscope or I'll, I'll try and, um, I probably won't Instagram all of them, but I might, I might Facebook some. Oh, Periscope, oh, that's a good idea. I could do a little little periscope while we're we're doing it like a little before that's what I'll do maybe maybe I'll do a little before before we move all our crap out but there's just a pile of crap everywhere so you'll see all the crap uh, but then you can get a sense of what the furniture looks like and the weird stuff that we have on the wall that's in weird spots right now just because we moved things since then and um, yeah, except for the after won't be for a long time because <laughs> we have a shelf that we need to order and we have to look for, um, we're going to try and find barn wood for, for the shelves and, you know, it'll take a while to hang all the stuff. So it won't be a quick before and after, but I can do a before and um, I can show the paint after and then I can do a later after when we actually have the shelves and all that. Maybe we'll do it that way. Um, I think we've been here about eight years maybe now. So it was a rehab home. So, you know, when they rehab houses these days, uh, they just put all, you know, generic everything in basically, right? So that's why the generic wall color and, and everything. And uh, we just, we actually liked that when we moved in because there wasn't anything super weird that we, we, we wanted to move in without having to do a single bit of work because, you know, we needed to get back to business right away. You know, we need to get back to work right away. Um, so we couldn't spend time doing any house stuff. So, you know, we looked at other houses that, you know, had rocket ships on the wall, like clearly kids' rooms and stuff like that, and, uh, or just like we have to remove wallpaper or redo something in the kitchen, and we just, that we weren't in a place to do all that stuff. So, um, so we, we've done nothing to this house, and, uh, so this is kind of like our first I mean, we've hung a shelf here and there and, you know, place furniture in places. <laughs> hung some art randomly on the walls, but not, um, we haven't done anything visual to the house. So, it'll be new for us. Haha. <laughs> That's what my mom would say, maybe. <laughs> or maybe not. But, like, when John's mom was here, she said that, you yeah, know, it's not very baby-proof here. You'd have to baby-proof it. And I'm thinking, well, yeah. It is not. Right now, for sure. <laughs> Especially with our crap everywhere. I am almost around this uh, ruffle in the middle here. 
And you might, you know what, I think I might actually call it an evening a little earlier tonight. I think I might get around this ruffle and then we'll just call it instead of starting, starting the leaves. I want to get a good night's rest so I can get that wall up and running um, tomorrow. Yeah, you know what? I feel like I'm getting into the groove a little bit, a little bit now. Um, I am, I think what's really helping a lot is that I'm going through a lot less fabric right here. So you got to think I have the stabilizer and this other piece of fabric right here. So I'm, I'm going through like two layers less of stuff on, on this blue one. And when I come up through the petals, I'm sometimes only through two pieces of, of fabric. So I think, um, I think it's working a lot better now because I'm past that, the thickness of that center part. So actually I think that the petals are going to go even easier than, than this ruffle. But yeah, I did pick a thinner, I, I'm not using my normal embroidery needle, which is a little thicker. I'm using a thin, um, it's still not flexible, it's still stiff, um, a thin sewing needle with a smaller eye and everything too, sharp, sharp point. Um, but it seems to be working. But yeah, it was just so tough to get through that first layer there, but yeah, I think it's, I'm feeling it now. All right, so one last stitch, and all I have to do is come right down there, and uh, I'll weave this into the back, and I think we will just uh, stop there. Uh, let's see, we got Saturday before our new block is done. I'm gonna weave it into the same place. Oh, thank you. Yeah, um, thanks for the advice too. I'll uh, I'll let John know know that. And uh, yep, I think I think you're right though. Just enjoy the process. I'm gonna just have to. It's gonna be one of those things that I'll have to look at that way. I'll have to look at it as an enjoy the process, have a fun time in the you know living room and uh, hanging out and drinking coffee and whatever and planning and stuff and and not think about oh my god I want this done just think about have fun painting I think that's good advice so all right I am done with this thread it is I'm gonna just break it off it's barely holding on there and here we are oops this way I think though so it's really subtle but uh I don't know I'm kind of digging just the 50 weight it's just 50 weight orofill thread I mean, this is literally what we've been sewing with uh, in the machine. It's that thin, and then I just doubled it up. It's kind of like a little delicate blanket stitch. I, I'm, I'm digging it. Um, and I feel like I've done something different on this applique. I've been trying to do things, different things on all my applique blocks, and I haven't really done it in a while, and now I feel like I have. So that's cool. So all right, guys, I'm going to flip you around, and we will call it early tonight. Uh, so hey there again, here we are. Cute, cute, cute. So tomorrow we'll pick up on some of these. Maybe we'll do, you know, two or three of these little petals, but then Sunday it'll be new block day. So uh, this one <laughs> will go in unfinished land, but we'll get, we'll get pretty much, uh, we'll get, it'll be one of the unfinished blocks that'll feel a little farther almost finished compared to the other ones. So, all right, thanks again, guys. This will go up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies uh, later this evening, and I will do some little mini periscopes tomorrow of the painting uh, when we take breaks and stuff. I'll, I'll show you, I'll do a little one before for the, be the before of it all, before we more move furniture, and then um, after we take our break from painting, <laughs> we'll see. Once we get some black up on the wall or something like that, maybe. So, all right, have a great night, guys. See you tomorrow.